Hello, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Feelers, and this is number seven in my powerful toolbar series. Today I'm going to discuss the upper part of the toolbar. So let's get started. So I went into stock photos and I pulled in a couple of photos. You can pull in any that you want. So I do not like this first section. I prefer to adjust things myself, but it could give you a starting point. So I'm going to take this photo and duplicate it just so you can see the before and the after. And now the first one here says auto levels. So I'm going to click it and you can see that it's definitely changed the levels and it did do some improvements so if you want to get a head start on auto levels this is this is what affinity thinks that auto levels should be and then you can always go in and make your adjustments i think it's a little bit strong for me but it is a good starting point so that would be the before and the after let me undo that Okay, and now we'll go to right here. The next one is auto contrast. And it looks to me like it faded it even more. So like that. And I don't know if I would have done that. So let me see if I undo it. Maybe I could, maybe I could be wrong, but I think I would have gone to adjustment, brightness, and contrast and kind of tried to work out what I think to me, that would be a better use of auto contrast than what they showed us. So you have to decide on your own. I I personally believe you should go into these things and learn how to use them. Uh, there's so many tutorials on this, but if you prefer to get the quick start, that's a great quick start for you. So let me delete that. And next one here is auto colors. I clicked this and nothing seemed to have happened. So Affinity Photo seems to think that these are the right colors and I don't know if they are. I did not take this photo. So maybe we can go into, let me see, color balance. And let's see, um, maybe I would like to add a little, see a little bit more red to me would be better. And let's see what we can do here. And again, everyone it's to everyone's own taste. So I think I would have used that as a color balance. And whereas it did nothing, I did that. You see the difference? Even though it's automatic, it doesn't mean it's right. And that, that doesn't mean mine is right also. It's a matter of taste. So let's get rid of that one. And the last one is auto white balance. And that was what it decided was its auto white balance. It could be right. The skin tone looks pretty good, and, but I still think you should do it on your own. Okay, so let's go to the next section. So let's hide these. We don't need them any longer. So now let's draw some items. We'll take that and maybe we'll draw a circle. I took these all from the shape tool. Now on the top toolbar, it says select all. I don't like using it, but if you do, I've, I've used deselect a few times if my mouse was that high up. But when I select something and I go select all, and then I do control or command J, it duplicates it. So it, it's, it selected it. But what I don't understand and I don't like is if I do select all, here, I don't see the marching ants. So I can't really tell I really selected it unless I duplicate it. So let me deselect that. And But if I prefer to do it this way, if I control or command click on the layer icon and I say select all, you see the marching ants? Then I know what I've selected. And then I can control or command J and duplicate it. That makes a big difference to me. So once again, if I click on a layer and I use the top select all, and even if I click off that layer, I don't see the selection. So I don't like that. 
but I, but if I click on it here and do select all, I see the selection with the marching ants. I don't know why it is like that. My preference is to use the layer panel and click and control a command click on the icon. Deselect is not a problem. I use deselect up here and it takes the selection away. Uh, but if you like the keyboard shortcut, I can just do control or command D. It does exactly the same thing. So if you wanted to do something, this is where the selection is and whatever you do will be inside that selection. Whereas you click this invert and everything you do is outside the selection. So for example, if I wanted to paint outside, but I would not paint inside, for example. Uh, let's get another color just to see. That's outside the selection. And if I wanted to paint inside the selection, I can do invert again and paint inside the selection. Okay, now I brought in this other photo from Stock Photos. And this is Quick Mask. If you just hit Q, you have a quick mask. If you hit Q again, you no longer have a quick mask. It takes it away. Quick mask is a different way of masking things. For example, if I wanted to mask this water, I might do this, and I might use the quick mask brush, the selection brush, I mean, and do it. And it is a straight line, so it really would make a pretty good selection but there are other cases like up here where it would not and i would rather paint a selection up there so let's try quick mask i can hit the letter q or i can go right here and click quick mask and quick mask you must have your palette set to black and white so if you click the letter d uh, you can go right to black and white. If you don't know, if it doesn't work for you, check out my top 20 tutorials on how that works. Now remember, black hides and white reveals. So if you go to your brush tool, and I'm using a soft brush. In fact, I'm going way soft. A very soft, round brush. And if I paint now, because it's black, nothing happens. But if I paint white, it reveals. So... What I'm going to do is paint the sky right here. And I kind of like being able to see it. So I'm going to get a close up. And the softness of it is really important too. So you might want a little bit of softness in the brush. So I'm just painting like along the mountain. I'm holding my space part and dragging so I can move. That's my favorite part of this. And Photoshop used to have that too, and I used it constantly. So when you have a close-up, you don't have to keep going back and forth. So let's do this. And see now here how the mountains go. It's kind of fuzzy. And you can go back and forth. You could see what the mountains look like. There's clouds in there. And I can, so maybe I'll get a little bit of those clouds more as part of that and I'm doing once again I tell everybody in every one of my tutorials I am working very quickly so that your tutorial doesn't go on for hours but you should take your time with things like this so what I'm doing is as I'm painting you're seeing the actual sky now and let me get a wider look and just paint the sky back. You don't want to see any red left on the top. So you could also have combined it. You could have started selecting with one tool and then go, went to the quick mask and kind of refined it. And so now I'm going down here and I see a little bit of red on the edge. And when you're done, let's say we're done. We might not really be, but when you're done, you take off the quick mask, you toggle or you, you hit Q again. And that's your selection. 
and it's a softer it's a soft selection and so for example I can go to uh, let's say adjustments <clears throat> and see color color balance and maybe I want to add more blues to the sky or a little purplish blue here and you see you see the difference there and let's go maybe to the highlights we can add some more blue to that look at that blue sky now and so now we'll deselect and again it's not a perfect selection because I went very quickly but that was the before and that was the after and so it gives you a visual representation when you're painting uh, we could have done the same thing with the uh, bottom so if I wanted once again I can do this I can select the picture and I can go to quick mask again and it's a brand new quick mask now it's it's starting over and now if I want I can do the water maybe I, maybe I don't want it so hard I just want a soft whoops we don't want to go that way. I am really going quickly here and I shouldn't be going that fast, but I am trying and I'm working with a mouse by the way. Almost all my tutorials have been with a mouse so far because I feel like many of you do not own tablets. Many of you are beginners, you haven't bought a tablet yet. Tablets are wonderful to work with, especially if you plan on drawing. Drawing is the best and painting with a tablet is the best. Uh, you don't really need a tablet when you're just adjusting coloration with photos. But so here we have the sky now. I mean, I'm sorry. We have <laughs> here we have the ocean now and I could take off the quick mask. So now the only the ocean is selected and I can do another adjustment. So let's see. Maybe we'll do curves this time. I don't know if it'll work, but let's see what we'll do. Um, instead of master, let's it, let's get some blues and raise the blues. Look at how pretty that is, huh? So we just raise the blues in two seconds, and then we deselect. We could do this up here. Remember, deselect is up here. Oh, you can do Control or Command D, and we deselected. And now let's look at the difference. That's the before, and that's the after. So that's how. These tools work. Uh, they are very effective. Quick Mask is one of my favorites. I use it on situations like this because I like the softness of the way it masks and I like the fact that I can paint a mask in and see exactly what I'm doing as I'm painting. So I highly recommend you practicing with Quick Mask. So let's go to the next section. So we have a new pixel layer and now I'm just going to make a marquee and fill it with a color and deselect. So well, let's use this since we were on there. And then I will duplicate that, Control or Command J, and I'll move it here. Now, if snapping, the magnet is snapping. If snapping is not on, as I'm moving around, nothing really snaps into place. Wherever I let go, that's where it's going to be. If snapping is on, it will start telling me all my lineups. You see how it's telling me that? And it actually pulls it into place. So that's how snapping works. Let's make another selection with a triangle and fill it. I need to put a new pixel layer and fill it. And that's it. Okay, so you can see the pixels now as we get larger here. So now we'll do another layer and we'll do a rectangle. And we're going to fill it with a different color, which is the blue. And let's see if we can get this to work. So let's get a real close up here. So we can see the actual pixels. If I don't have snapping on, it can go anywhere. It can go in here. It can go in between. You notice in this close-up how I just can go any... I can drop it anywhere I want. It doesn't matter where. If I have snapping turned on, 
move by whole pixels. Like I know I, if I go up one, it has to go up a full pixel. Every time I move, even here, you could see it's bouncing to a full pixel. So this is, a, this is alignment, and you can see the line telling me that's a, an exact pixel. It's, it's forcing the alignment of this on that pixel. It's forcing the alignment on the top. It's forcing the alignment on the different points. So that's the forcing the alignment. I can, so when I'm moving it around, but then if I do this, it's telling me that, yeah, it doesn't matter whether I'm forcing the alignment or not. I'm only moving one pixel at a time. So that's part seven of my powerful toolbar series. And I hope you like it. And if you subscribe, you'll be notified when part eight comes out. And that'll be pretty soon. Thank you so much and have a good day.